The untrained eye might glance across the serene surface of a backcountry pond and never see what lies within. Yeah, July we, got we got a newt! Excellent! Yay. A trio of biologists cheer enthusiastically at the capture of a type of salamander at a marsh in the foothills of Lanceville. I've always been a fan of amphibians all my life. Uh, whether it's frogs or salamanders, and, uh, and these ones are particularly uh, charismatic. The rough-skinned newt is protected under the BC Wildlife Act. However, not much is really known about them. So the newts are terrestrial during the winter. Um, in the spring, they undertake a breeding migration to uh, marshes and other standing water um, where they breed and lay their eggs. After the breeding season, they return back to the terrestrial environment and spend most of their time almost in a state of hibernation under logs um, dug down in the forest. No studies have really been done to determine the size of the Vancouver Island newt populations. Um, they're assumed to be healthy, they're yellow listed in BC, but no one actually had solid numbers. Alexandria's study in Morel Lake revealed an estimated population of about 900 newts living there. She also learned something significant. I did discover that the newts, uh, a certain percentage of them, carry chytrid fungus, which is an amphibian pathogen, um, which has caused worldwide amphibian population declines. Um, we're not certain how it affects the rough skinned newts in the area, um, whether they're just carriers or whether it's actually um, doing them any harm but it was an interesting finding nonetheless. Shows the orange nice. These little amphibians can look rather innocuous, but don't be fooled by their placid expression and docile behavior. One of their unique features is um, that on the mainland, a lot of them carry uh, tetrodotoxin in their skin, making them extremely poisonous to most predators. Um, however, here on the island, um, a lot of them are non-toxic. In fact, in some areas, the rough-skinned newt is the most poisonous amphibian on the Pacific Northwest. They will flash their orange belly at predators to warn them not to take a bite. However, it's not a big problem as long as you're not planning on eating a newt for dinner, you should be okay. Even though their numbers seem to be stable, there is concern about the degradation of these diverse ecosystems that support a myriad of entities, including the newts. And unfortunately, when people are building roads as access to new developments, they ignore environments like this. They think, oh, what possible good could that pond have? There's no fish in it. Um, but actually there is, in this one pond alone, there's probably well over, well, there are six species of amphibians. I think every animal is important. They're uh, part of the food chain. They're part of the ecosystem. I think you can't really know the imp how important an animal is until you remove it. If we suddenly lost all our newts on the island, I think we'd probably see cascading effects through the marsh ecosystems. Uh, yeah, wow, yeah, look at the yeah. size of those. Oh my God. Those are the bullfrogs? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know what this pond's going to turn into. The rough-skinned newt has a relatively new threat to the viability of the population. American bullfrogs continue to invade pristine marsh environments throughout the island, and they are known to prey upon newts, among other creatures. In Lanceville, I'm Annette Lucas.